We've been telling y'all, man, you know what I'm saying? Um, Origins DC, man, we some old, old school heads in Detroit. Like we told you, man, we're on seven years as of this month on the radio. Been promoting records for 10, 15 years. And I'm going to be real, in my eyes, they're like... For real, I saw the first time I seen a cat like an M&M was open for these dudes. The first time I seen like a lot of local cats that have been doing their thing and making a name for themselves. These guys were a big part of what they were doing. And my people's right here. I used to know them as Mr. Bones and Hectic all the time. Damn. But my people, you know, Jamie Madrox, the Monoxide Child, Monoxide Twisted Live in the Zone. What up, my people? <laughs> how how y'all been, man? You guys represent the east side of Detroit. Always have, man. You know, uh... Especially like you guys on Psychopathic Records, they really didn't have no East Side representatives until you guys came along, huh? Now I mean, they got an East Side division. I mean, now, you, yeah, now we have East Side constituents. I mean, for real, you guys don't put the East Side down, you it's know? That's true, That's man. where we're from. That's where we're born and raised. Yeah, seven we, Mile. Is that where you guys are at? Seven Mile yeah. Grashen or somewhere? Yeah, where are you guys? Where are you guys putting the most work? Uh. Gotta I be say, right there. Yeah, that's pretty Everything much Everything on the corner. Right by the McDonald's. That's the Mecca of three where it all began. Three blocks from the McDonald's. <laughs> three blocks yep. from the McDonald's. In between Crashin', in between Shaner, it's only like a three block stretch. Yeah. That was us. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's true. We left our mark. And actually, that those couple blocks don't have as many burned down homes. Anything north of <laughs> anything <laughs> north of eight mile, we were just like, that's that's uncharted territory. We can't go there. It could have been Japan. Yeah. But you guys, man, doing that stuff back in the day, man, you guys were like a group and, and, and stuff that really knew how to build something from nothing, man. I mean, you got to pay them dues, and, man, you guys don't pay your dues. You know what I, I'm saying? For in real. all honesty, though, we didn't know anything. When we first started, we didn't know what we were doing. We had a little bit of talent. We had the drive, you know what I mean? We had the willpower, but we didn't know what we were doing, making tapes. Once we signed with Psychopathic Records... They taught us. They gave us the formula. Right. They did the same thing with many bands, but we were the, one of the few that took that formula and ran with it. And like, it worked. Like in Batman Begins, when Bruce Wayne is schooled by Ra's al Ghul. Yes, sir. The teachings, that's what happened. That's what we got. Think. We were Bruce Wayne. They were Ra's al Ghul. No, that, that's definitely dope. Because, dude, like, yeah, you're right. Tapes. And you said it right there. That's how it. many how many cats that's out here old, now old. can actually say they had their stuff on tape? Right. I mean, true. you know, I, mean, I know all that stuff I used to have was on tape. I mean, probably you guys didn't even press nothing on CD until we, I bet, I, I know y'all had Season of Punk and became on CD at one Keep time. Keep it real. We Eventually. couldn't afford it. We CDs couldn't afford cost it. too much, dude. Same reason. Back then? Same reason why I would buy tapes instead of CDs. Because you buy two for the price of one CD, you could buy two tapes. That's it. You that's know, it. for real, man. Now Easier I, to steal. Oh, you, you, you know. cracked a little plastic. Plastic off of it, it came Slip it out, right? <laughs> I don't need the cover. I just want the tape. Plus, you get four blanks for the price of one real one. So That's your homie is. buys one, you buy one. Everybody makes their own mixtape. Dude, hence the word mixtape. That's how I learned how yeah. to rap. You're taking tapes, <laughs> recording rock him off the radio. Yep. And then I, yes. I write his rhyme, but in my own word. Like if he said and, I'd say like and. You know really? What I mean? Just nice. change it That's and dope. learn like how to how to keep a beat. That's right. So you're listening to Rock Kim and writing his verses out and changing the lyrics, yeah, huh? Yeah, that was it. That's, that's how pretty dope. Dude. That's how it started. But yeah, see, that's, that's how real you you guys came up on stuff like Rock Kim and stuff. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I ain't no joke. That, man, was that was my stuff too. Gorillas dude. in the mist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah used to be bumping that. The only white cats in the deep. Talk about the lynch mob. Yeah. yeah Walking around with African band, Metallica. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> X Clan. The whole nine, dude. Oh man, we were just. We, we ran with We him. actually got to meet Brother Jay after For like sure. how many years. Well, now that, suburb, awesome. now that Suburban Noise put him down, he's right. out there again. Absolutely. But when we first met him before that transaction oh, really? happened, we were just like... He didn't believe it. You he didn't probably, believe yeah, we were on it. You probably ain't going to believe it. These two painted motherfuckers, we used to bump, raise the flag, and all that good shit. You can't say that one, dude. Good one. I got you. I got you. Just don't, don't do it again. All right. Yeah. I, I got yeah. that. <laughs> Well, you, you think we on W no, blank no, no. off radio? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. See, it's, it's my naturalism. Oh, I don't blame you, dude. I know when you start to I get comfortable. I exude obscenities. Yeah, it's I like apologize. Sweat. Oh, I do, dude. It's, it, it's hard to edit a twisted CD, it's but it's tough. all good. I it understand. Is tough. But I noticed on your like, you know, you guys have been doing so many albums, but on your newer album, I just noticed the musical advancement of like a lot of the lyrics are deeper than that, dude. It seems like you know, what I mean, you guys got the new album out, Wicked, right now. You guys, it's a, what does Wicked stand for? Does it, you guys actually break? Break it down in some kind of acronym or something. Yup, it stands for Wish I Could Kill Every Day. Yeah? That's ruthless. No, that is ruthless. It is ruthless. That's ruthless. ruthless like bad man age. That, that's kind of like, wow. that's like bringing a new, uh, a, a new, new, um, saying to the wicked stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's like reinventing it or something, man. It's not, not necessarily reinventing, but rejuvenating. Right. You know what I mean? It's like the, 
the wicked stuff is just, I don't know, it's starting to become watered down and the focus, is, we're losing the focus on what truly is wicked and what's just some people, you know, that make a flyer with some dead chick on the cover. Right. But you know what I mean? We see many of those. Right, we do. And I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying that we got to represent it. But it's, don't, a, it's also a way of thinking, too, though. You get mad at the world. You're PO'd. We got you. See, see, I came with it. And you just, that's how you feel. You want to kill everything. Yeah. But don't you guys feel like, you know, some of the stuff that other people are saying, I don't think they really mean it. You know, you guys, when you guys are writing something, portraying a song that is wicked or whatever, it's like you guys are like really stand behind them lyrics. You yeah, know? definitely. Like you can tell when somebody really means what they're saying and just is saying some stuff to like. Because it rhymes. Yeah, just because it rhymes, you, you know? Okay, and it yeah. took a long time to get out of that phase. You know it's what I mean? True. It's, it's, it's true. It's evolution, it man. Really That's is. how it works out. Because yep. especially if you're going to do music like wicked music, it's mm. got to, to be able to stand the test of time you got to keep coming with it it's something different independently with no radio no video seriously. no tv no no commercial aspect at all this you is know life I mean? and we'll us. do 150,000 records 200,000 records we'll go across the country and sell out venues two three thousand people that's what we do but we're like we're what i call music's biggest kept secret man people have no clue but once they finally come in and see it they're just like this is unbelievable and do you see that from even even like other crews that everybody, are on a national level everybody. they don't know what to expect and when they see your stage show and they're like we, man what have i been missing we do this thing every year called the gathering of the juggalo yes sir and it's like um it's, it's coming like up a, in a couple months huh august mm -hmm. yep. Yep. yep it's like a mini woodstock you go there for four days it's non-stop partying and 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 Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, for real. That's what it is, for four days. And what we do is we bring people from the world that we don't associate with, the mainstream world, inside of it. You know, everybody from Ice-T to Mac-10. And they all come there, and they're like, by the time they're done seeing it, they're like, I want to sign to your label. You know what Be I mean? Because at first it's a business deal. At first it's like, okay, we're booking you. you know, right. You're coming out here. You're playing the show. You're going to get some cheddar off it. Right. There's, there's that facade there that, you know, oh, I do what you do. Right. right. And if I just get signed down with the label, they're all going to – that's what everybody believes that. But in actuality, <laughs> that's not the way. It ain't like that. But, no, they, they see it. But it's not something – it's like when people leave – it's like that Men in Black stick where you zap their memory. And then they're just blank. Because we don't want them blabbing about what our uh -huh. world is really about. So we try to keep it secret. It's we let them true. speak. Let everybody know that. And, and plus, there's, there's like there's like more to getting down to the label than that anyways. Because if you they get down with psychopathic records, they got to like really earn the respect of the fan base. You're right. Like you're not just like, that's one thing I always notice. Because a lot of groups have came and gone off the label. People who's come and gone. But you guys, so true. you guys are actually probably out of anybody that's ever been on the label. They're the longest besides, of course, ICP. Yeah, it's true. And, and like, uh, you know, it's like, dude, if those fans don't give you the respect, man, it's like, you ain't going to last, dude. Yeah. He I mean, knows his stuff. Yeah. I was going to say the other S word, but he knows his stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what Straight it is. up. You have to make. <laughs> You have to make them want to be a part of what you're doing. It's true. You know what I mean? And if it's through music, if it's for the way that you sell your music, if it's for the way that you promote it, whatever, the more people feel involved, the more that it seems that they endorse it. That's the same thing with mainstream. That's plus, why like, they don't like us. Plus, they can't and it's always been like control. a hands-on approach, too. You know, you guys doing stuff like gatherings oh, and, yeah. and yeah. other events, meeting greets and stuff. There's all kinds of I mean, legwork that's and a kissing lot of, babies and shaking hands. That, that's a lot of do. stuff a lot of artists don't take the time to do. And that's why they don't have a real fan base. They have that, true. They have that dude that's one age, grows up, and never their fan again. And, and, Come to the show. I want to hear the hit. Yeah, and that's I'm gone. Why, that's why when you play some of these venues, they'll be like, like, so-and-so was just here. And you're like, how many people came? 62. Right. What, Perfect what, example. T.I. Yeah. We came to a venue in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It holds like 2,500 people. Uh -huh. We sold it out. And they were, we're like, who was here last night? They were like, T.I. There were 60 people here. That's so like, crazy. Wow, you know? but, but at the That's same time. That's how learning. Ticket sales and album sales, two different things. It's a difference between the dedicated fans. You know what I'm saying? If somebody is truly dedicated to what you do in your movement and what you got going on, they're going to get out. They're going to get off their... Boop, and get out there and come out there and, and represent. But it's like, if it's some old fly by night, you know, I can I can always get at that. I right, turn on right. MTV and that's on every two minutes. Yeah. I don't gotta get up and go. I'm I'm about to go to sleep. I yep. gotta wake up tomorrow to go to work. And dude. it'll be on in the morning. Exactly, it'll be on again in the morning. I can put my bottle dude, full of books. Dude, psychopathic, so gangster that mm. they bought time on MTV back in the day to, <laughs> you to, that? to play the shockumentary. So joint. true. I mean, who else buys time on MTV? Right. And that's actually, like Barack Obama. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs>